In this short video, I'm going to review the WTB Gravelier mountain bike slash gravel bike saddle. I bought this saddle about two months ago off Amazon.com. I believe I paid around $75 plus or minus. I'll put a link down in the description below if you want to check it out. I've done probably around 20 rides now on this saddle and the longest one being about four and a half hours, which was kind of a mountain bike slash gravel uh, event. So we're going to go ahead and take the saddle off of the bike. I just wanted to show you kind of what it looks like on the bike, but I'm going to take it off here in a minute and we can check out all the dimensions and talk a little bit more about it. That's what it looks like on the bike. Now, what I learned about this saddle while researching it, you know, a couple months before buying it was there's actually at least three models of this exact saddle with just with different rails. Now this is the stainless steel version, which of course is going to be the heaviest. There's also a titanium version, which is a bit lighter, and then a carbon fiber railed version, which is the lightest. Although I don't remember the numbers off the top of my head, I will put them on the screen. Really, the difference was quite minor considering the price difference. As I said before, I paid like $75 for this, and I think the titanium one was, was around $120, and the carbon fiber was even a lot more. So in my opinion... Um, the stainless steel is definitely the way to go for the small, small weight difference. Now, speaking of the weight, it does have some information here, although that's not based, that's not about the weight. So uh, let's go ahead and check what the weight is on my actual scale. I don't recall what it was supposed to be. Let's go ahead and put it in grams. So it's 223 grams actual weight. That is, you know, from my experience with saddles, very average. I've had saddles that were around 275 grams. I've had some that were in the 190s. So this is, I think, pretty average. My lightest saddle, I remember, was like 110 grams. It was fully carbon fiber. So that's just some reference. Now, here's the actual dimensions as they're, they're written right here. I'll just read the size right here, and then we'll kind of check it to make sure it's accurate. It says 140 millimeters wide by 246 millimeters long. And then it says fit range, which I'm not really sure what that means. 100 to 130 millimeters. Maybe that's your sit bone width. I've never had my sit bones measured, but I know it's possible to do that. And um, with that, you can determine your saddle size. I've never done that and I've never actually needed to. So before we go on any further, let's actually check the size. Unfortunately, I don't have a metric uh, ruler here with me, but I do have this old, um, oh, I do have a metric ruler. Let's go with metric. One second. Here we go. It's kind of big, but it should do the job. In fact, this will give you metric and imperial units. So it's, I'm measuring this in at about 200. I mean, it's a little bit hard to get it. Yeah, it's about 245. Is that what it said? 246 so pretty much dead on the width uh, this is really hard to measure exact because of the the roundness of it uh, I'm looking at about 140 I guess and what does it say yeah 140 so yeah the width the width and length is accurate as they're described and one thing that you know you can consider when looking at the profile of saddle is is I don't know the names of it but basically kind of the contour here what I learned doing a little bit of research about it is basically if you have a saddle that's kind of like this in the back, a little bit up, which this one isn't a ton, but it has a little bit of a kickback, it's going to be more for long distance riding, kind of more comfort so that you don't slide back. But if you're going to be doing really technical work, going off uh, drops and you need to always be able to get off of the saddle, out your, your butt behind the saddle quickly, it might be more flat. Um, practically speaking, I don't know if it matters that much. I can slide off the back of this one no problem. And I've never had a problem sliding off other saddles that don't have that kind of slight kick up. So um, that's what they say. Practically speaking, I'm not sure if it really matters that much. More about it is this is what's called a short nose saddle. So it is shorter than some others that might be another half an inch or even up to an inch longer. And I'm not really sure about all the reasons for that, but it has something to do, I think, with letting you sit right on the edge here more easily or something to that effect. I'm really not sure about that, but I will say that 
for me, it's totally fine, but I've also never had problems with the longer ones either. I kind of like the look of this one. I think it's a little bit more handsome with that shorter nose. But one feature that really does make a big difference to me is this cutout. I do sometimes have the issue, I'm not sure how to say it, but my you-know-what will fall asleep sometimes on some saddles after uh, probably about an hour of riding. And that's almost 100% uh, solved when I have these cutouts. This isn't the first saddle I've had with, uh, still have some mud from my last event. Um, it's not the first saddle I've had with a cutout. Um, and it, it really does help that problem. So if you have that problem where, where your uh, sensitive bits get, uh, can fall asleep, um, or go numb, I guess I should say, after quite a bit of riding where you feel like you need to stand up to kind of get things, get the blood flowing or whatever, uh, this will probably help. Not just this saddle, probably any that have a cutout. I've had really good luck with that. And I won't say it 100% fixes the problem because I have had slight, very slight numbness after more than like two hours or so. And usually I just need to stand up and get out of the saddle. But I will say it helps a lot. So um, I'm a big fan of these. Not all my bikes have them. And I'm not probably going to replace all of them with these just because I don't ride all my bikes for such long periods of time. Like my older mountain bike i never ride it for more than 30 or 40 minutes so it's never a problem but anyhow um the other thing to consider with regards to the shape and the geometry of it is kind of the i hope i'm getting this right it's kind of the 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 um the mount that it it falls off on the edges now this is i think really personal preference but i always like and i look for a saddle that does have kind of rounder shoulders i hate and i've had another one in fact one i reviewed on this this channel many years ago was a very cheap, like $17 saddle I got from Amazon. And the, and the thing about it is it was very flat and that became really uncomfortable. And at that time I kind of learned that this, this fall off profile kind of, I, I don't know, gives me the type of support that I really in, um, enjoy on a saddle. I don't like to have like a flat surface. It's very uncomfortable for me. So what else about the saddle? Um, of course the body here, it's just plastic. Um, rails, as I said, were stainless steel. One nice thing about them I saw, and I know that I know a lot of saddles have this, but it does have um, some measurements which appear to be in millimeters. So it starts at zero and goes to 25, and then there's a little arrow that says max. Um, some of the paint's already getting worn off, it looks like. But um, yeah, I do like that because you so I can set it back exactly the way I had it before, at least in terms of the the fore and aft. Is that right? Um, forward and backwards positions. One thing though about the hole, and I've heard people say this before, although I've never had it a big problem myself, is that if you do a lot of riding in the mud, the mud can kick up and get onto your clothing um, through these holes. So that's something to consider maybe if you do a lot of mud riding. I have seen ones that have cutouts and just like thin fabrics or net kind of mesh things to try to help prevent that. But um, yeah. The other big thing to talk about when, with regard to saddles, of course, is the surface and the, and the, the firmness or, soft, or softness of the material itself. So the surface of it, it's obviously some kind of synthetic material. It's some kind of plastic, grippy, rubber compound. I don't know exactly the technical terms for it. And it has these little tiny um, grips. They actually go down slightly, very, very slight. Try to get that as close as I can. Maybe you can see. This is probably better than the manufacturer, even WTB, even details things. I find a lot of times manufacturers don't detail their products as well as I think they should with very close up photos and such. Um, sometimes they do, but oftentimes they don't. So I'm trying to get this as close as I can for you so you can get an idea of what that surface really looks like. But the idea of it, of course, is to give you a little bit of grip. I don't know if that really makes any difference, but I do know I've had some that had really aggressive grip and um, I didn't like the feel. It felt almost like my, my shorts were, my cycling shorts were snagging or kind of dragging on it. So this is pretty it's smooth enough. Certainly you can feel it with your fingers, but it doesn't, doesn't really do much. So I like that, uh, that texture level. Now this one does describe itself as a firm saddle and I can confirm that is absolutely true. Let me, I don't know how to put across the firmness in video, but I'm just going to press this for you. And it's pretty much the same throughout. There's no, 
zones that have any difference that I can see. So I'm, I'm pressing that, you know, pretty hard. And there's not a ton of give. I'm trying to show you that as best I can. It's firm. When it says firm, it is firm. Um, that may be the one thing that I would like to be different about the saddles. I kind of wish it was a little softer because I think almost all my other saddles are slightly softer than this. Now that said, like I, like I was saying before, I did a four and a half hour gravel ride uh, just a week ago and it was totally fine with my cycling shorts, which of course are padded. They're, you know, uh, Lycra, what is it, Lycra? Is that the right word? Yeah, they're spandex or whatever you call it, um, sites, typical cycling shorts. And uh, with the padding that comes with those shorts, even after four and a half hours, I didn't feel any, any soreness, any numbness, any discomfort at all with regard to the saddle. However, I can tell that if I just wear jeans or shorts, probably for more than an hour to an hour and a half, if I'm actually just sitting on the saddle, not standing up a lot, uh, it's probably going to be a bit, a bit hard to be totally honest. It is a firm saddle. So when you make your decision to buy this, um, take that into consideration. It is firm. And I didn't see, at least on Amazon and just my like, quick research, uh, I didn't see that they had anything any softer. So if you want this saddle, it's going to be a bit firm. Um, it's a hard, you know, the, the, it's hard. I'm trying to kind of torque it and there's really no movement to speak of that you get out of it. Um, it's pr pretty firm. I guess one other dimension I can give you is the, the width up here at the nose. I don't know. I don't believe they showed that on the manufacturer's website. Oh, looks like my batteries are pretty much dead. Okay. When high tech fails, low tech is here to save the day. So we have about, I'll just try to, you know, it's a, it's, um, a taper. So it's hard to measure an exact number, but I'll just give you that which is, it looks like around 38, let's say 38 millimeters wide at that part, just to give you a reference. One thing that you may care about, which I actually care about, is this distance between the rails to the top, approximate top of the saddle, because for my bike, the dropper seat post is mounted as high as it can go, and I barely, the saddle's barely high enough, so in fact, I think oftentimes people will want a lower height probably. In fact, for me though, a slightly higher height could be better. In any case, let me try to get that dimension for you. Although it's a little bit difficult to measure uh, without the proper tools. I don't have a drop gauge or anything. So what I'll do is just this. I'll use the drop gauge feature of these calipers and that should get us very close. Okay, right about there. And that is about 41 and a half millimeters so that's to that surface there if we went further back it's a little hard because there's a dip here um, but i'll try my best to get that and that's to the bottom of the rails um, for there we have it looks like around 43 so i think roughly from the this area to the bottom of the rails is around 41 42 43 maybe millimeters you can subtract the, the standard width of these rails if you want to get the center, but that'll just give you an idea. Around 42 millimeters, um, you can compare it to an existing saddle you have or something like that if you want to try to get an idea as if this is going to work for you. I think that's about all I have to say about it. Um, I, I did notice that there's some there is a screw here. I don't really know what that does or what it goes to if it if it can. If you can service this saddle in any way, I'd be very surprised if you could. Yeah, just my general impressions are that I like it a lot. Uh, it does the job. You don't think about it much when you're riding with it. It doesn't squeak or squawk, which is good. I don't like any saddles that make noise, of course. I haven't had any issue with like uh, pinch points or anything like that. And that did steer me away from a different WTB saddle that I had seen. I remember it had like plastic up here and some people said that was uncomfortable. So I wanted one that kind of covered that better. That's why I chose this one. Um, yeah, I mean, it's really been perfect. It does kind of have that profile. It kicks up in the back, but I've had no problem getting my butt off of the back for descending technical sections. No issue at all, especially with the dropper post, of course. Um, I really haven't had any issues with the saddle. I like it. I'm tempted to even to buy another one for my actual gravel bike, but um, 
yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't think I have anything more to say. So thanks everybody for watching. Again, I'll put a link to it down below. It's an affiliate link. So um, I'll get a small kickback on that if you do end up purchasing it. Anyway, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching. See ya.